Hi, welcome to the Noise Path. In this episode, we're going to try and answer some fundamental scientific question within the budget of the Signal Path, of course. I've actually made a list, so uh, safety first. Let's take a look and see what we have here. So I have scalable nuclear fusion. Nope, that's not going to happen. Gene editing. No, nope. the theory of everything. Don't know enough math for that one. And then we have quantum computers. No, nope, that's not going to happen. Cure for cancer. Nope, nope. Uh, no, let's keep going down the list here. Let's see what's at the very end. How many LEDs can you light up with a hot dog? I think that fits within our budget. Let's take a look. Well, first we need some hot dogs. Here we go, we shall already have. And we're going to put some electrodes at the sides of this hot dog, and that will pass a current through it. We're going to use that current and the voltage developed across the hot dog in order to light up those LEDs. So how big are these hot dogs? Well, I think the usable length of them is probably about 100 millimeters. You know, a nice round number because the electrodes are going to be partially inserted into the meaty part here. So we're going to try and see what happens across that 100 millimeter. Now, it's not as simple as that. We also need to measure the impedance of this hot dog and see how much current it will draw and whether those LEDs actually interact with the total current or not. That's a subtle point. Let's give it a try. Okay, so here's our hot dog. We have two science-grade forks protruding partially inside and we have two clips connected to it, which goes to our LCR meter. Now, if you look at the LCR meter here, at 100 hertz, this hot dog has a resistance of about 223 ohms in parallel with the capacitance of about 1.2 microfarad. And there is some capacitance component to it, and that's in fact one of the reasons why AC line voltage is dangerous coming in contact with the human body. Because even your capacitive features will pass some current through it and it will interfere with your nerves. Even though that's a reactive load, it wouldn't matter, it would still affect you quite, quite seriously. So the DC versus AC danger is partially because of this. There are other reasons for it too. So it means that at 223 ohms across the entire hot dog, you can calculate what the every individual subsegment of the hot dog represents in terms of resistance per length and the voltage that's distributed across it. We can do a quick calculation now. So let's take a look at our calculation. So if you have a hot dog that's a 100 millimeters long, and then we have measured its impedance to be 223 ohms in parallel with 1.2 microfarad, if we apply something at 60 hertz, let's say from a CD line to it, the impedance part of the 1.2 microfarad doesn't matter so much. It's still a much larger impedance than the 223. So the dominant source of the resistance, the dominant source that determines the current through it, is going to be the resistive part. And we can divide and we find that it's about 2.23 ohms per millimeter. That's it's going to be the cross-section resistance uh, per unit length of this hot dog. Now let's say we apply a 100 volt RMS to it. In that situation, we're going to get, let's say, if the voltage is evenly distributed across the hot dog, and this is a kosher hot dog, so I think that's true, we're going to get 1 volt RMS divided by per millimeter. So and that is 2.8 volt peak to peak per millimeter. And that's enough to turn on essentially pretty much any LED. So why is it that that LED wouldn't interfere with this calculation? It's mostly because the equivalent resistance of that LED is much higher than the 2.23 ohms per millimeter. As a result, I can stick an LED inside of the hot dog, it should light up and it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't interfere with the rest of the calculation we've done. For the first order approximation, it should work just fine. And of course, we need some LEDs which we have plenty of. This is a bizarre thing to be doing on a Friday evening, I have to admit. So because I'm using some white LEDs, I decided to use the programmable AC-DC power source so we can crank up the voltage to 150 volt RMS to make sure that those white LEDs, which need a higher forward bias junction, would also turn on. And then that's it, you can see there's 150 volt RMS on there. Everything is turned off. Let's look at the hot dog. All right, here's the moment of truth. And check it out, it's beautiful. That, I believe, is a unique sight. That's pretty cool. So this thing has a power factor of almost one. Of course, this hot dog is going to have a power factor of one because it is mostly resistive. Now it's beginning to make some unpleasant noises. And the current is going to keep going up because the contact between the forks and the hot dog is going to get more and more charred and more connected. And eventually, at some point, it's going to disconnect. So this hot dog is not going to cook with those LEDs in it. And it smells delicious, I guess. There you go. I think we just lost the connection. And there goes all of those LEDs. But the theory worked. It worked exactly as we were expecting. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section. And happy April Fool's Day.